it would be brilliant if he recognised me and took real umbrage and just just punch me in the chops. There'd be something magnificent about that, about getting like, you know, like Manolo just decks me and just struts on and he's wearing a white suit. So Russell, my boss, uh, you know, he loves big introductions. You know, he loves putting things up in lights. And I know uh, of your work, you're an understated guy. I'm an understated guy. So it makes me a bit nervous the big intro. Um, okay. uh, can you critique me on my big you know, Russell Howard introduction? I'll try, yes. All right, good. All right, here we go. Please welcome to the show, the United Kingdom's number one comedian. He has been drunk with James Corden. He was nearly adopted by John Oliver's family. He is Boris Johnson's favorite stand-up. Yeah. And he beat a world record recently held by Frank Sinatra and Barry Manilow. Please welcome to the show, Russell Howard. Oh, thanks very much. I mean, the only thing is, I have i don't think Boris Johnson is a tremendous fan of mine, and that's definitely reciprocated. Um, I have definitely had a drink with John's family, and I did weirdly beat Barry, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra's record. What's interesting, because I did like 10 nights at the Albert Hall, um, which is pretty amazing, but classic British headline, because I've got a lazy eye. Um, the headline was uh, uh, old blue eyes beaten by young lazy eyes. So it was, I sort of had this moment of like, wow. And then this beautiful British undercut. That's the same as Australia, right? It's that yeah. similar, it's the tall poppy syndrome. We right. just, it, which doesn't really exist in America. America, what I love about the States, it's such a brilliant place to perform because the excitement it, it, that people stand up at the beginning of shows and they kind of, you know, they announce you on and they whoop. Whereas it's when you perform in America that you realize that, that you learned comedy in Mordor because English crowds are so desperate to not have fun. Right. So, <laughs> so, you, you, so then when you gig in the States or you gig in kind of Europe, you realize, oh, this is great. This is easy, you know? So, yeah. All right. So you're coming to New York City. You're going to be yeah. in the famous town hall. Yeah. Uh, again, is this like a re-coming out party for you? Like re-entering society in some ways after the crazy last few years? Yeah. Well, the, the I, haven't, I haven't been to America now probably for, yeah, like four years. Um, so it, I cannot wait because I've been gigging all across kind of England. I was lucky enough to do some gigs in Australia and New Zealand last uh, January. And at that time we were kind of like the only touring show in the world because, you know, we'd managed to get into New Zealand and they, they honored a tour that we were meant to do. And we had to do two weeks in a hotel. So to be able to travel and not have to spend time in a quarantine hotel and do comedy like we used to do two years ago, I cannot wait. And to sort of, particularly gigging in New York, if you're kind of from England, same with you from Oz, eh? it's that thing you can't quite believe you're there. Do you know what I mean? That you're the 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 excitement and just seeing your name up in lights next to donuts. There's something so beautiful about it. And the American crowds are great, man. It's it's fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, and I, I love one of your great bits where you people seem to think you are Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, I, I get that a lot. I get a lot of uh, Ellen DeGeneres and so the older I get, more like a uh, shrunken Stephen Merchant. Those are my, uh, which like, um, these aren't great jokes for people listening on the radio, but I look like both those people. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just like, I often thought that when I was younger, like must have been really hard to do magic on radio. Like, do you know what I mean? I've got, yeah, it's, it's gone. He got rid of it. I, I, I can't see it. Oh, it's behind my ear. Oh, bloody hell. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah, yeah. It's, it, so, it still blows my mind that there's we have golf on the radio over here. That's right. That's a hard job, man. He's hit it, and it's it's in the air. It's on the ground. Uh, you know, I, you'd be able to do that. You'd be great at that. Yeah, but what I get, like people say, being a comedian's a hard job. But trying to make because it's always going to be the same. It's like whack. Oh, it's gone far, but not as far as it could have got. You know, it's just 
you know, and it's in the hole. Now he's picked it up again and off he's always oh, going for a walk. It just feels like it's a hard thing to make interesting. But um, yeah, it's joyous, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited. And um, yeah, I'm, hopefully I'll be able to hang out with some mates of mine. And um, yeah, can't wait. Now, uh, John Oliver, when was yeah. that first moment you and him uh, became friends? Can you remember? Was it yeah. in a seedy pub, you know, back in the early O's? I don't think John's ever been in a seedy pub. I can't imagine John is a seedy pub dweller. I think the first time we met each other was doing probably like a university gig. And I was sort of his assigned support act. And um, he kind of took me under his wing. Um, and yeah, it's just brilliant. It's just like it, he was kind of one of my, I was sort of a Padawan to his Jedi master. Do you know what I mean? I'd sort of. Yeah, I got to gig all over the country with him. It was brilliant. Um, and it's just that, it's that mind-blowing thing when one of your mates is like this sort of massive star. It's so cool, you know? So you get to relive coming back to America and his show will be back on back on TV. Yeah. And you'll be like, well, well, that's, you're that's on the side of buses, mate. What's going on? Yeah, well, this is it. Well, and I think the, because I'm, I'm popping out to do some stand-up before the tour to kind of see if stuff works. And I think it coincides with his first show back. So... Yeah, it's it's kind of great. It's it's also great having sort of comedian friends who are based in another country, so that you can sort of just go, is this is that something? Does that work? Is that you know? And go down to like the comedy cellar and all these kind of amazing venues and stand up New York and the Stand and all these great venues and just sort of see if these jokes work because they work in England. And it's like, do they mean, do they mean anything here? You know, it's it's so much fun, man. It's the best. Well, uh, you know, on Netflix, you've had your your second special drop, uh, Lubricant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you had a, an accompanying documentary that goes mm -hmm. along with that. And uh, it's it really documents how you essentially got kicked out of your house at the beginning days of COVID. Can, oh, that sounds quite drastic. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, well, so basically at the beginning of COVID, my, my wife is a doctor. So when we were super scared and we didn't really know what it was, our house became like a sort of a refuge for doctors who had really elderly uh, relatives that they live with. So it be quickly became apparent that I wasn't necessary <laughs> to their struggle. So I was kind of packed off <laughs> to live in the country with my mum and dad. Um, but luckily it was only kind of eight weeks. And then, you know, we kind of figured it out and we realised, you know, the way to kind of navigate it. But it meant I did have my my birthday in my childhood bedroom you know what I mean and it's something about having your 40th birthday in your childhood bedroom is a is a is a hauntingly low moment man do you know what I mean where I was literally it felt like all these posters from my youth were taunting me do you know what I mean did you have Samantha Fox up there I didn't have Samantha Fox I had probably won't mean anything to Americans but a guy called Robbie Fowler who is let's say the equivalent of uh, Scotty Pippen that's right. So do you know what I mean? So it's like having Scotty Pippen on the wall, yeah. just staring at me going, well, what are you doing back here? And you go, Scotty, things have got weird. <laughs> and it, it, it was a really, it was an odd eight weeks. And I did a TV show in my bedroom. And normally after a TV show in the UK, there's a green room, you have a bit of a party. All I had afterwards was just my mum and my dad and like eating like shepherd's pie and kind of, it, it was such a god i mean it was a weird time for everybody but you know it felt especially strange and then after that you know i was just gigging and gigging outside gigging in car parks gigging in laybys anything to get the netflix special ready and then um yeah that kind of dropped and it's kind of there's been an amazing response to that and now here we are touring i'm touring a new show not the netflix special because I was meant to tour the Netflix special in America and Europe, but you know, something happened. So I did that and now I've got a new show. So yeah, it's fun. Now, uh, of course you broke, uh, we talked earlier, Barry Manilow and Frank Sinatra, they held the record at the Royal Albert Hall. Mm. You broke the record. You did 10 shows there. Uh, uh, what words will you say if you run into Barry Manilow on the streets of New York city? I, I would be amazed if, uh, if that happens, but I don't know, probably, you know, I'm English, so, all right, Barry? You know, I can't imagine, you know, it'd be, although it would be brilliant if he recognised me and took real umbrage and just 
just punch me in the chops. There'd be something magnificent about that, about getting like, you know, like Manolo just decks me and just struts on and he's wearing a white suit. You know. it's, it's crazy because he's been partying in New York this week. He's Is out he? partying. Yeah. I, yeah, I was researching you and I'm like, oh, what's Barry up to? I better make sure he's still alive. So I check on Barry Manilow and he was doing a you know, singing Copacabana in a restaurant in New York City last night. So oh, fantastic. Uh, so there you go. You, you well, might- hopefully, well, hopefully, Barry, if you're listening, come to the show. Um, yeah. It's at the town hall. What You can open. In final words, is that, you know, when you, you know, research someone, I've gone deep on you, Russell. Um, did you a really way of putting it than that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> did you really have to put on an Aussie accent when you went to Australia? Um, yeah, mate. Because well, everyone was asking you about the royal family. Yeah, mate. Well, you know how it is. So it was like, as soon as they found out that I didn't have, you know, like, so I'll just be talking like this and it's an English accent. They're like, oh my God, how is she? Is she okay? So I just adopted it, mate. And I was just kind of, you know, and I prefer it. It's easier. It's slower. There's, you can take your time with it. You can, you've got phrases like don't piss in your pocket. And <laughs> um, it's, I, yeah, it was brilliant, man. I, it's, That's all because uh, of Meghan Markle. Yeah. Getting asked about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Meghan, yeah. Yeah. And it, it was Meghan. right. It was at the time of the Oprah interview. So right. it was just like, I became this weird spokesperson for the Royal family. It's like, I, I've not met them. Right. Like oddly, my brothers had a night out with Harry years ago, but that's about it. I don't, I, I, don't, but I don't think either of them remember anything about it. No, no, <laughs> naked pool or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mate, Russell, fantastic, mate. And uh, awesome. the, the special's great on Netflix. The documentary's hilarious as well. Thank you. Uh, you know, you, you, your origin story is like Spider-Man's. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's, well, uh, yeah right. well, I can't wait. Well, thanks, Brad. That was an absolute joy. And uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you, mate. Good on you, Chip. Hey, see you on the, the main streets of New York. Yeah, yeah, come along. Yeah.